when objects are very massive but very compact, so they're very dense, they bend space-time itself. And when two of those massive things collide into each other, it causes these sort of distortions that radiate outwards, and those are gravitational waves, these ripples in space-time. Last few years, there's great excitement because we detected several gravitational waves. So to detect gravitational waves, if you imagine the distance between us and the nearest star, and then imagine the width of a hair, and detecting that width of a hair in that length, that's what we've got to do. And I can't believe we can do this, but we can. Albert Einstein published his general theory of relativity over 100 years ago. Since then, hundreds upon thousands of scientific papers have been written. In 2016, the Australian Research Council funded some of the world's leading scientists and engineers to work collaboratively on gravitational wave research. This is OSGRAV. The Australians have been a huge participant. Uh, they've helped and made significant contributions to the technology, basically the lasers, the optics, the data analysis, planning future detectors, um, interferometry itself, essentially everything that has to do with the discoveries we've made and the preparations for the future. So I think what really excites me about Osgrove is that this all started at the beginning of last century when Albert Einstein had these wonderful thought experiments about trains moving together and beams of light and photons trying to escape the gravitational field of the Earth. And then in the later part of last century, we actually took the observations of neutron stars in orbits that meant we knew gravitational waves existed. And we told the instrumentalists, this is what you've got to be able to build and they went and did it. And then in 2015, they switched the thing on and bam, we saw two massive black holes coalesce and this field of astronomy was born. And the thing that's most exciting is that there's a real passion from everybody in Osgrav about this field of science. They're excited to be doing it. It's exciting to be able to lead them. And we're making new discoveries almost every day. It's wonderful. Any interferometer has a few main components. So one of them, for example, is the laser. Then you have something called the beam splitter, which is right in the center. And the idea with the beam splitter is that you want to take one light and then you want to split it along two parts. When a gravitational wave passes through the Earth, the two LIGO arms become squashed and stretched, letting the light onto our sensor. But the signal is quite fussy though, so to make it less fussy, we use the process called squeezing. This makes the signal less fussy and this allows us to catch a gravitational wave which might otherwise be lost in a sea of noise. So when we first detected gravitational waves, I was the operator on shift who pushed the observe button. I was so happy that it was me. Yeah, I, I, I even got a tattoo on it. It's the most important gravitational wave uh, detection for me because it was, the, it was the first and it proves that Einstein was right. It's great that you can go to LIGO and then you see all your Osgrad friends as well. We're all working on similar topics and we're all helping each other out and really doing everything we can just to push through and make the detector a, a little bit better. So yeah, so this face camera was made at the University of Adelaide. Uh, it started off as a research project for a master's student. His name was Cal. And we decided it was a good enough bit of equipment that we really need to take over to LIGO and try out in real, not just in the lab. And we did that, actually, and we started taking some of these images that we see here. We can see uh, what we're imaging here now is really the phase and the amplitude of the laser beams that are coming out of LIGO. So we can, now we can really start probing uh, what's going on there. LIGO, as you know, detects gravitational waves, but all of our normal telescopes, optical telescopes, radio telescopes, X-ray telescopes, they detect electromagnetic radiation, which is just light. So when LIGO detects an event, 
optical, radio and other telescopes slew to that position in the sky and what we're trying to do is find a counterpart. So LIGO is not so good at localising where the event is. So it's good at detecting that a neutron star merger has happened, but we don't know where. The first job of the electromagnetic telescopes is to find a host, so find that merger, what galaxy it's in, uh, so that we can then study it. There are two steps to gravitational wave astronomy when it comes to understanding your data. You detect something, then it moves to build B for part two. And part two is what is in the data. So you have some parameter space. You can visualize it as a 3D cube. Put in your mind's eye like sparks. They're flying around this cube trying to find the place that is consistent with the signal. Gravitate with lots of random motion into a little ball. And that ball, that's where you think that thing happened. One of the great things I really like is that not only can we do the science, we can explain to people what it is that we're doing. You know, we've got outreach programs and I don't need to call for volunteers. They're, they're queuing at the gates to come and inspire the kids because they're excited about the science themselves. The school programs we run, they use a lot of hands-on interactive projects and activities. Students play with lasers and do a role play, so we try to make it as interactive as we can. You know, astronomy is the doorway to open up physics to them. Hopefully along the track we're going to encourage a lot of innovative, creative, scientifically thinking students that we can maybe find uses for this gravitational wave detection. I think the majority of the people in Osgrove are young and not all of them are going to be professors when, when they've completed their, their studies. We've been very lucky that we've, we've had a few beacons who've trailblazed forming their own companies. And we want to make sure that um, everybody's not too narrow in their focus, but also think, mm, you know, maybe I could commercialise this, or maybe I could play a role in the, the private sector using the skills I've learnt and the discipline behind the science we're doing. I've been reading a lot of news articles and literature about autonomous vehicles and how they're going to be a huge burgeoning market. And the key technology to the success of those vehicles was around LiDAR. We work a lot with signal processing, and we work with lasers, and that's all LiDAR is. Over 3,500 Australians die in car crashes every year. I, I have a personal family member, my father was involved in a, in a car crash. I think fundamentally it's about preserving human life and preventing car crashes, so I'm excited to see the advent of driver assistance packages and seeing that aided by LiDAR. I think LiDAR is gonna play a, an important role in that. We don't mind if, if, if LiDAR doesn't turn out to be a viable business option, that's fine. But we want it to be because the market forces or the technology wasn't, wasn't ready, not because we didn't give it a go. The exciting part is we don't know what we're going to find. And unless we go out there and really look, then we'll never know. So we really have to keep pushing. Determined. Keep pushing. Definitely a part where like, people are like, you know, you might just never detect gravitational waves. Like, you don't know like, what's going to happen. Astronomers were skeptical of us, like, oh, like, oh, pff, whatever. They knew we were going to take anything. But, well, we did. And then for it to happen so clearly so early was amazing. So now we've opened up this whole new kind of view on what's going on inside the universe. Feels to me a bit sort of Star Trek-ish in a way, in that we're going and looking at things that nobody else has ever seen before. We're sort of probing new regions, we're looking for new problems, new sources. What is out there in the universe? We don't know. And, we have to go out there and look, boldly step where no one's stepped before. I think Australia will play a huge role as this wonderful new science moves forward. This centre has started at the birth of gravitational wave astronomy. We proposed it before gravitational wave astronomy had been born, but where the funding came just at the time of the first discovery. Now we have the next set of discoveries and we see this as just the tip of the iceberg.